Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. I'm Alison Langdon. Well, it's official. Hollywood's loss is the British royal family's gain. Yesterday, more than a billion people were transfixed by the joyous wedding of Prince Harry and his new wife Meghan Markle here at Windsor Castle. With a week of family dramas leading up to the big day, no one really knew what to expect. But as always, when it comes to celebrations, the royals never disappoint. The happy couple has enchanted the world with their real life fairy tale. But now, the real work begins. Because this is not just a marriage of love, it's a marriage of duty. Like any young couple about to be married, Harry and Meghan are a romantic mixture of excitement and nerves. And at the start of the big day, probably asking all the same questions. Will the weather hold up? How will the dress look? Will they get to the church on time? But for these two lovebirds, this is wedding pressure like no other. And on top of that, billions of people around the world were watching. That is incredible to have those eyes on you. Are they a good match? I think they are the perfect match. She's a real life, modern day, relatable, mm -hmm. authentic princess. And I think he is now officially 100% has now married for love. I make this vow. Today, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are the most famous newlyweds in the world. Till death is deepest. Oh, that's the palm in Gilead. And while every royal wedding is one for the history books, this one had its own special charm. You just, it's one of those moments when the, kind of, the hair's kind of got in the back of your neck. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Stand by me, so darling, darling, stand by me. What a day it turned out to be. The gates of Windsor Castle were open early for the hundreds of guests lucky to have scored an invitation. Among them, plenty of famous faces, How are you? making this wedding as much Hollywood as it is royal. A couple of Harry's ex-girlfriends and a few experienced hands. For all the pomp and ceremony, what's easily forgotten, but what these two brothers showed us is that the royal family is just that, a family. They're very close, but as brothers go, they've got a wonderful relationship, which is, is fantastic, and we saw that again today. Grant Harold was Prince Charles's butler for six years. He was a servant at many official engagements, but yesterday, he was Harry's guest. What's it like to score an invite to one of the most extraordinary royal weddings in history? Very privileged. Um, I had a moment of, without question, kind of reflecting and, and thinking about how lucky I've been to actually have worked for the family and got to know them. And when you see this kind of attention and all these people here to support him, and you think, you are really lucky. As everyone knows, Meghan Markle's no stranger to the cameras. But the transition from Hollywood celebrity to British royalty hasn't been scandal free. Since news of her love affair with Harry broke, she's had to endure the airing of her own family's dirty laundry. But Meg doesn't have a relationship that I've seen. Her jealous half-siblings were only too happy to disrupt her happiness, while her father was chewed up and spat out by the tabloid tigers. It was so embarrassing, we should all feel sorry for Thomas Markle, who awkwardly ended up using illness to pull out of the wedding just days before. This wedding should have been all about Meghan and Harry. Instead, the lead up to the wedding was all about Meghan's family. You couldn't write the script, could you? You couldn't write the script, but it's made everybody, um, in one sense or another, uh, really here in the UK, open up their arms to Meghan even more. Mm -hmm. 
More than anyone, Julie Montague knows what Meghan Markle is getting herself into. She's an American yoga instructor who 14 years ago married into British aristocracy. Her husband is the delicious future Earl of Sandwich. The first Earl of Sandwich dates back to the mid 1600s. My country, America, is not even near that old. So, and that's a lot of Earls to get through. Julie made sacrifices for love and says Meghan should prepare for a marriage and a new life with plenty of challenges. Do you sometimes still feel like an outsider? I don't sometimes still feel like an outsider. I still totally feel like an outsider all of the time. It's, you know, it, it's the American accent that gives it away for me. Um, but definitely, every time I'm in those circles and I have my nasally American accent, I can feel the stares of judgment on me. But it doesn't affect me at all because I think to myself, oh, thank God I'm not like you. Megan is not going to be changed by the royal family. She is going to be changing the royal family. That's how I think. With her father a no-show, speculation about who would walk Megan down the aisle went from the obvious, her mother, Doria Ragland, to the ridiculous, hunky Harvey Specter from her TV show Suits. Instead, she made the unprecedented decision to walk part of the way by herself, the independent woman that she is, and then be met by her future father-in-law and future king, Prince Charles. There was no better sign that Meghan is well and truly part of the family. You know Prince Charles very well. You've worked for him for many years. How would he have felt about being asked to oh, escort I Meghan he, down the aisle? I think he'd be absolutely honoured. Absolutely honoured. When I heard the news, it was that moment when you kind of think, this is, this is fantastic. This was very special. This is very significant. And I also noted that when he got up uh, to the altar, I, I noticed Prince Harry actually mouth thank you. At the altar, Meghan was the perfect mix of Hollywood superstar and princess bride. And Harry couldn't wait to tell her so. Her dress was by British designer Claire Waite Keller, the artistic director of French fashion house Givenchy. Is it what you were expecting? It's what I hoped, um, but you never know until they emerge out of the car or the carriage as to what it's going to be. I think British I designer think Amanda Wakeley was a favourite of Princess Diana, and both the Duchess of Cambridge and Meghan Markle have followed suit. She says in all its simplicity, this is a wedding gown that will be copied by brides the world over. I'm really pleased because I love clean, modern, beautiful lines. It's the most difficult thing to do because you, you can't hide it behind a, a ruffle or tulle. And there is a huge trend towards sort of more modest dressing, so, so sleeves. Uh, and I think that neckline will be what will really go through again and again and again. Stand by me, stand by me. This marriage represents a new era of the British monarchy. And in many ways, the ceremony reflected just that. A mix of classical hymns and traditional prayers with gospel music and this somewhat enthusiastic address from Reverend Bishop Michael Curry, all the way from Chicago. Jesus did not get an honorary doctorate for dying. He, he, he did, did the Reverend get a little carried away? I I don't think so. I mean, I think it was it was important what he said, and um, no, I think I think it was actually perfect. I think that everything about it was it was unique. It was a it's not like any other royal wedding we've had before. The, the royals were bemused. Mm. I mean, William was trying to stifle a, a laugh at one point. I'm sure. Yeah, but the thing is, is that's what I mean. They've got that lovely personality about them. It's not like mm. the the family from 70, 80 years ago. Mm. Thankfully. Page boy Prince George and bridesmaid Princess Charlotte did their best to upstage their uncle and new auntie. But this little man stole the show. After a few tears from mum and some candid moments in between vows, the world welcomed Prince and Princess Henry of Wales, the new Duke 
and Duchess of Sussex. What is it about them that has captivated us all? I think the, the thing about them is it's very much the Hollywood dream. She's found her, her prince, she's fallen in love with her prince, and they're off in this very romantic journey together. Coming up, not one, but two kisses. And royal baby news. Everyone's like, when is she going to get pregnant? That's next on 60 Minutes. This weekend, the little village of Windsor has been host to the biggest party of the year. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have finally tied the knot and it seems everybody is celebrating with them. I mean, beautiful. So, I mean, I was that, I was quite close to her, but the tiara was lovely and she just looked flawless and happy. They just were beaming. I mean, unbelievably beaming and just so in love. And so it was just amazing. It wouldn't be a royal wedding without a horse and carriage. But American socialite turned by Countess Julie Montague says this was one of the few traditions kept amid a very modern and culturally diverse celebration. I found the whole thing extraordinary. I mean, it blew my mind. I mean, it was great. I don't think anybody expected that. Amid all the fanfare, the newlyweds still found an opportune moment for a sneaky kiss, well hidden by an unfortunately positioned coach lamp. Do the royals know how to throw a good party? They've been hosting parties for, for centuries, so I think they've got the hang of, of how to do it. Harry, the once playboy prince, was always going to throw one hell of a party. And the celebrations were certainly that. I mean, I've been lucky enough to be invited to different parties over the years um, within the palace, and they're always very civilised, they're always very dignified, uh, and they're wonderful occasions to be invited to. And anyone that's going to that will... I mean, they're very lucky and also really privileged. Whether they actually get to dance in the royals is another, another matter, but I've done that, so I feel quite lucky. Tick for you. <laughs> yes, it really is. <laughs> This is where Harry and Meghan will live as a married couple. Kensington Palace, which is home to 15 members of the royal family. Currently in a two bedroom cottage, the newlyweds will soon move into a 21 room house, right next door to William, Kate and their three children. It's perhaps a sign that the couple is ready to start their own family and soon. Everyone's like, when is she going to get pregnant? You know, now that they're married, it's like, OK, mm -hmm. in the next year, but we'll see. Harry at least doesn't have that pressure on him, as probably William and Kate did, to produce that heir. <laughs> and so, the spare. Right, the heir and the spare and the other spare. And, um, and so with them, of course, I'm, sh I'm sure that they will probably have a family, but I don't, I'm not sure if they necessarily feel that pressure to do it right away. Unfortunately for this bride and groom, there's no luxury honeymoon to jet off on. Instead, on Tuesday, they're headed straight to their first official engagement as husband and wife. And former butler Grant Harold says this is when the real work starts for Team Harry and Meghan. It's going to be quite full on, but they've uh, got an event at Buckingham Palace coming up for the mm -hmm. Queen's um, hosting the 70th birthday for Prince Charles. So that'll be the, the kind of first, I suppose, kind of duties. Again, it shows this modern way of doing things. They haven't just suddenly gone off because they know they've got something they've got to do first. And I think that just shows the dedication, not just to the job, but also, well, especially to his, to his father as well. Megan has come into this, she's 36. She, she knows what she's getting herself into. She is used to public speaking. I mean, you can see her, she speaks so eloquently. She's incredibly intelligent. But at the same time, she's used to dealing with mm. paparazzi and press. She's gonna have no problem with that. I don't think she's had to have any lessons on that. The new Duke and Duchess of Sussex have an extraordinarily tough job on their hands. It's unlikely they'll ever be King and Queen of England, but their popularity means they'll still play a huge role 
in keeping the family's PR spin positive. And that means a huge weight of expectation on the world's newest princess. I think they're going to give her a lot more leeway than probably everybody expects. I think we're going to be seeing great things from Meghan, but we are going to be seeing her a lot. This is the greatest role of her life, and she's married the love of her life, but she's definitely not going to hide away at Kensington Palace. No way. She's no doormat. She's, oh no, she's no doormat. No one's going to be sweeping her under the rug. And it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be great to watch. I can't wait.